Beast Wars. Running from 1996 and as late as 2001, this was my childhood line. Yes, I have a lot of nostalgia for the bombastic Generation 2, but this is the line where I started getting the figures myself. Because of this, Beast Wars will always have a special place in my heart. And I want to share that with all of you. So welcome to Beast Wars Backtrack. Hello everyone and welcome to another Beast Wars Backtrack. I'm your host, Roz13, and today we are looking at 10th Anniversary Rhinox. As usual, before we take a look at the figure, let's take a look at the box itself. So, to start off, we got Transformers Beast Wars logo, specifically the 10th Anniversary version, which has the sort of G1 style Transformers font. The 10th Anniversary logo. DVD included. Yes. In fact, this comes with the Spark, which is... It's an episode that does feature Rhinox, but it's actually the origin episode for Air Razor, who didn't have a release in this line, the, the 10th anniversary line, as far as I know. <laughs> Over here, we have nice uh, illustration of Rhinox uh, sporting his slightly more show-accurate uh, color scheme. We got his name and the Maximal logo. Over here, we see that this is number five because it comes with the fifth part of Transmutate. We'll get to him at some point, folks. Don't worry. We see that he comes with the right leg and lower torso. And here we have a product photo that shows <laughs> the kind of weird bot mode that Rhinox has. They took a lot of liberties with him when they made the original TV show. So his original toy doesn't look 100% like he does in the show. The, the Generations toy that was a Voyager class that was made later on uh, does a slightly better job than this. I don't have that one, sadly. And so while they do have some stuff that is more show accurate, he still has a Maximal logo emblazoned on his shoulder. And that's kind of weird. I don't know why they did that. But he also comes with a bio, and it reads, Maximal Second Command and Chief Science Officer, Rhinox prefers to remain at his station aboard the Axelon to engage in battle, but, he doesn't, but that doesn't mean he can't fight. On the contrary, his triple-plated steel skin and wide array of medium-range and hand-to-hand -hand weapons make him dangerous to even the toughest opponent. There's a good reason Rhinox is the last line of maximal defense. After the perimeter is breached and all weapon systems are offline, no one's ever going to get past him. Or no one ever got past him. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, and nice little way to uh, rationalize a few things. In the show, his weapon is represented as like a chain gun thing. But the toy had it as this weird little spinny melee weapon, so... Feels like when they're talking about the the his uh, medium range and hand to hand weapons, maybe they were talking about that. On this side, we got description of the Beast Wars TV show. On the bottom, we have a call out for Cheetor and Waspmater and the Long Gone Transformers Club. And this side, we just have windows that look into the top of the box. So yeah. Enough of this. Let's take a look at the actual toy. And here's Rhinox and all his rhinoceros glory. <laughs> and I gotta say, he looks very, very cool in this form. The paint scheme that they did on this guy is pretty awesome. I love this sort of kind of metallic copper thing they got going on there. How accurate that is for, you know, real rhinos, I don't know. But it does do a lot to make him look like his show model. The uh, Tampo Maximal uh, symbol there, not so much. <laughs> also, the uh, gold on the horn is a very nice touch. And the way they did the eyes, I really dig it. It looks cool. This is very well done. Um, Articulation-wise, he doesn't have a whole lot, really. You can move his leg around but it kind of messes with the sculpt and you can see stuff there you can also move his back foot a little bit but again it's not really supposed to be for anything so really for the most part it's a use your imagination thing 
but he is a nice, solid, chunky transformer, particularly in this form. But speaking of transformation, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're going to start with the legs. We're going to straighten these out and rotate them around. And we'll go ahead and pop out the toes and stuff as they were. Now, interestingly enough, if I remember correctly, in the show model, they actually don't do the rotation, but they still have, like, these things as accurate to the toy. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, next we're going to uh, kind of open up and separate his backpack. The sword sometimes might stay on, otherwise it'll pop off. This also shows something that I think is really cool. This guy stores everything. And we'll get more into that later when we talk about his accessories. So we're just going to rotate those down. There's some hinges here and a ball socket joint here. Ooh, and he's getting tall. I'll have to readjust things in a bit. Next, we're going to... We're going to... Come on. <laughs> there we go. Pop these out. And then... You can either rotate these up like this, which I think is what the instructions originally had you do, or you can leave them down like this, which is more accurate to the show. It's your toy. Do with it as you wish. Next, we're going to readjust the camera. There we go. We're going to flip this down and flip this down. And ah! <laughs> that is a scary looking face. Now we're going to rotate these parts down. I actually love all the stuff they do with the beast mode head in this. It's a very involved transformation. And we're going to flip this down like that. And there we are. And he looks pretty darn cool. Now this is his mutant head. And... I don't think it's quite as strong as some of the other ones I've seen. I've mentioned before that I like this feature. This one, uh, not as much. Mainly because it doesn't look super radically different. I mean, yeah, it, he's got like sharp teeth and stuff like that going on here. But it just feels like a bigger version of the Rhinox head. But what you can do is you can open it up and here you are. I think maybe this is also the part that I don't like. These little wing flap things, they don't really go anywhere, so they just look weird. But it is what it is. The uh, paint on this guy is amazing, though. Look at all the paint they put on the face. Even the insides of this, they didn't have to do that. Heck, they didn't even really have to do anything here. Though I'm almost surprised they didn't try painting this up to be more show accurate so that people could use one or the other. Then you also have the nice gold on the inside here. Um, and then just continuing the sort of sprayed uh, copper stuff from the beast mode. And you have this bright green plastic and it just, it looks amazing. This is one of my favorites from this uh, anniversary line. I did have the original, and I think I, st I still do. I do have the original. It's just I don't know where all of his accessories are right now, so I couldn't really bust them out for comparison's sake. I also have the transmetal version of Rhinox, and I'll probably show him off in a separate video at some point. But yeah, he looks pretty cool. Articulation-wise, his shoulder is on a little peg here. And then you have a hinge here. This interferes a little bit, but if you move things around, you get a little bit more movement. Got a ball socket joint for the elbow, which gives you a little bit better than 90 degrees, plus rotation. No bicep rotation, no... Uh, wrist rotation, but it's a 90s Beast Wars toy. No um, uh, waist rotation. You can kick up. The skirt actually doesn't interfere with it too much, but it does kind of kick him outward. And you got a 90 degree bend, sort of. 
that joint feels really tight. It scares me. And you you got ball socket hip joints here with um, some rotation around here. But you can't do a very good splits because these skirt pieces on the side are getting in the way. Same reason why you can't really kick back very far. So he's got the stuff for articulation. It is just hindered a bit. Let's see if I can get him into a cool pose. We'll close this up because I think it looks a little bit better like that. Rawr. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. <laughs> Accessory wise, this is where he's interesting. So we're going to go ahead and start popping things off. Let me try to do it carefully so I don't accidentally rip anything apart. These parts feel like they're made out of some soft plastic, so I'm a little worried there. Then we got this part here. Which, truth be told, it's been a while since I've removed it, so there it goes. Come on. There we go. And then the final piece. Now we assemble it. So we got this part here, which has a little, little spin motor thing. Now we're gonna pop, let's see, make sure it doesn't, it's not keyed or anything. I haven't assembled this thing a whole lot, so. To be honest, I don't know if I've actually put it together at all since I got it. Here we go. That's tight and that worries me a little bit. And here it is. So in the cartoon, he kinda had this, except these parts were retracted in and this was facing the other direction and it wasn't a spinny melee weapon. It was a chain gun. <laughs> Mainframe took a lot of liberties with the uh, characters. And we also have a neat little scimitar sword thingy that looks actually pretty cool if you ask me. Here, we'll flip these up right now just to get them a little bit more out of the way. There we go. And here he is with everything. And he's pretty cool. And he's not falling apart like Dinobot was. <laughs> uh, this part is does come up because friction is a little bit greater there. But other than the limitations that you get for what it is, being, you know, a 90s era Beast Wars toy, it's pretty cool. It's not super show accurate. It's more show accurate. But I still dig it a lot. Um, I wish I had the uh, Generations one that was released several years ago. Uh, I think that was a Voyager class. Um, but I'm not even sure I ever actually saw it in the wild. And I think even when it was out, I was in a point where I couldn't really buy a whole lot of stuff. So probably wouldn't have been able to get it anyway. But I don't mind having this guy on my shelf. And really, I don't think you would either. He's... A pretty decent little toy and um, this repaint of him is very nicely done so uh, yeah this has been a review thank you very much for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe all that fun YouTube stuff check the description below for links to my storefront we can get official shelf space t-shirts and more and yeah thank you again and I'll see you the next time you invade my shelf space